Welcome to the 2017 Midland High School Commencement Ceremony. We are so happy that you are all here. As we begin, please silence all electronic devices. And now, please rise for singing the national anthem, followed by the MHS alma mater, as sung by the MHS Meister Singers. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Thank you, Meister Singers. Once again, welcome to the 142nd commencement ceremony here at Midland High School. Please have a seat. <laughs> I'm Lauren Curtis, and I'm the student body president here at Midland High. 
On behalf of the commencement committee, I would like to welcome parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, teachers, coaches, and most of all, the graduating class of 2017. We did it. Also, we would like to give a special thanks to a few board members of the Board of Education who are here in attendance tonight. Welcome, Mr. Brad Blazy, Mr. Pa Patrick Frizee, and Mrs. Pamela Singer, as well as Associate Superintendents, Mr. Brian Bruton and Mr. Robert Cooper. In addition, a huge thank you goes out to our class advisors, Ms. Scott, Mr. Pavlak, and Ms. Guzman. They have put countless hours into each fall to create our floats and assist us in decorating our hallways. Now tonight, class of 2017, we will take our final steps across this stage as we take our first steps towards our futures. Take a moment to look back on the last four years, all of the memories, the laughter, and the hard work. We have grown so much and are going great places. Now I welcome Ashton Doyle to the podium to introduce our first speaker. Good evening. My name is Ashton Doyle, and I have the pleasure of introducing one of this evening's one of the speakers for this evening's ceremony, Brittany Duford. Brittany is one of the wittiest people I know. Through all the stress of high school, her comments always made me laugh. She was one of the nine IB candidates this year, which is not an easy task. However, through it all, I was able to see her succeed in all that she did while also balancing the large workload. During her high school career, Brittany has participated in Key Club, where she was an officer, National Honor Society, tennis, swim, equestrian, and more. I have known Brittany for many years, but I came to know her best through our chemistry class. After researching with Michigan State over the summer, Brittany had a lot of experience in the lab, and I was blessed to have her as my lab partner. Even though she jokingly blamed me when something went wrong, she never gave up on me as her partner. Next year, Brittany will make Mr. Yoder proud and attend Michigan Tech, where she will pursue a degree in chemical engineering. It is my pleasure to now introduce Brittany Duford. As I thought about graduation, I realized it can be described in many different ways. It's a stepping stone, a celebration, the beginning of a new chapter in your life. It is all those things, but also so much more. It is part of a story, the story of you, one in which you are the main character and the author. Each of us have sat through enough English classes to know the basic plot of the novel. It begins with an exposition and ends with a resolution. Right now, we are only in the exposition of our story. This is the part in which the author develops the characterization of the main character in order to prepare them for events yet to come. That is what high school has served as for us. Four years in which we have all grown and become much different than when we began high school. We have made choices and learned lessons in order to become who we are today. We developed our characterization to prepare us for what lies ahead. Each of us took our own path to create a unique story, but now without help from parents, teachers, and friends. We are the authors and the main characters in these stories, in which our parents have served as editors, teachers as publishers, and friends as a marketing team. Our characterization is influenced by many factors. One of these is the setting in which it is developed. Generations have come through this building, each creating their own stories, crafting them from moments spent within Midland High. We have all heard stories from class classes, but why? Why do we intently listen to them and enjoy them so much? I believe it is because stories are meant to teach a lesson. Each of us have learned many lessons over these four years, many set in this very building. The influence of this building and the people here is tremendous. The cool, fun, and even a little weird things we have experienced and taken part of here have taught us lessons whether it's chemical idol dance competitions to teach us to be more outgoing, 
and you can have a little fun in the process. Or Eyeball Alley to demonstrate no one's going to judge you for being you. Then there's Chemic Salutes to show no good deed goes unnoticed. But last, and arguably most important, there's Chemic Pride. This is core to the stories told and lessons learned at Midland High. It's a unique concept you will find nowhere else, but will always stick with you. The first lesson Chemic Pride teaches is to be proud of who you are. We are taught this through the way each of us is part of the pride, and it is everyone's unique qualities supplementing it into what it is today. The next thing it teaches us is to take pride in what you do. Take pride because sometimes that's all you have. Hold your head high and push on. At the end of a tough match, game, or meet, when you've left everything on the court or field, you still say great game wholeheartedly when shaking hands with the opponent. Because you know it was. Even though some of the games are lost, you can still take pride in how you played and the fact that you learned something. It's not only breadth of character that we've developed, but also depth. As many of our coaches and teachers would say, this pride not only applies to basketball, swimming, chemistry, or English, but it also applies to everyday life. This is because the way these lessons have become part of your story, they develop your characterization and prepare you for the future. The influence of the community at Midland High is one thing, but the impact of the people here and their stories bolster our characters just as much. The first of these Midland High stories that comes to mind are the ones Mr. Demko tells in his classes. They are so captivating that his room fills to standing room only. The 9-11 story is one of courage, bravery, and sticking to your principles. This story instills those lessons within the many listeners. The Friday message is also one of Midland High's stories. It's a summary of the generations of this school. As classes came and went, principals have recognized lessons key for those classes and future ones. And they left them to hear, for us to hear, and the Friday message. Every Friday, we hear the lessons that the administration staff wishes to instill in us. They become part of us and our character. We take all of these developments in our character with us to future chapters. The beginning of a new chapter that graduation is doesn't mean forgetting the last. The pages of this new chapter are still tightly bound to those of the last, influencing them until the final chapter. One after another, the pages turn, but no one bats an eye at the change. But a chapter, that's when people realize they've lost track of time. Not of the moments, but of time. As I'm sure your mother has said, it seems just like yesterday, we were all scared to death walking into preschool, unsure of what was to come. We still have that moment fresh in our mind, but the 13 years of time in between have been lost along the long journey to get here. These moments will form the plot of an always developing story. This story is your story, one of daring adventures and amazing accomplishments. You are the main character, but also the writer. You pick the final destination, the resolution, and the character development. So join me and take up your pen to finally begin the next chapter of what is to be a long and fruitful story, a story of greatness and the future. Hello, Chemic family and friends. My name is Ian Andridge, and I am pumped and proud to introduce the other commencement speaker, student, student commencement speaker, Lauren Curtis. The Andridge and Curtis families have a long history of friendship, and I am so thankful to have grown up alongside Lauren. Boating, camping, having bonfires, singing, having lots of fun, going on mission trips, and yes, lots of laughing. She truly brings joy to everyone she meets. Besides being friendly and outgoing, Lauren also leads and serves by example here at Midland High and beyond. It would take too long to list all the areas Lauren has been involved in, so I'll just mention a few. She has served faithfully on student council all throughout high school, and this year has served as our MHS student council president. She has gone on several mission trips with our youth group, Extreme, at Midland Evangelical Free Church, most recently to Guatemala working with orphans infected with HIV. She has worked for Salvation Army's day camps as a counselor and as a site director, 
Lauren consistently leads and serves by modeling integrity and compassion. And talk about future plans. Well, yes, Lauren does have some. This summer, she is going to, she's going on a short-term mission trip again, this time to Haiti to serve those in poverty. She will also be working full-time at a camp called Spring Hill, um, working in Detroit for their day camps program. In the fall, she will be attending Grand Valley State University, where she plans to major in biomedical science in pursuit of becoming a physician's assistant. As all of you know, and as, as much as I know, Lauren has a huge heart and has a huge heart for people and even a bigger soul. Please join me in welcoming Lauren Curtis to the podium. Tough act to follow, my gosh, all right. Um, hi, as Ian said, I am Lauren Curtis. I don't know about you, but as I entered high school, I feel like there were a lot of things that freshmen just didn't know. First of all, what on earth is Eyeball Alley and why the heck is it called that? Also, what's a chemic salute? And why are there so many pigs in room 357? <laughs> we had no idea how difficult that trip can be from the first to the third floor. And we had no idea that there was a teacher who could put stories to music. We didn't know how stressful an IOP is or how hot this gym can get and had no idea that there was no such thing as a free lunch. If I could go back in time and give my 14-year-old freshman self some advice, there would be some specific things that I would say all summed up in this letter to myself. Dear 14-year-old Lauren, as your lifelong friend and observer, I have a few things I feel you should know, or rather we, as we enter high school. My first piece of advice is very timely considering you just had your braces put on. Number one, own it. You're 14. Don't for a minute think that you will not make a mistake or that you will automatically be perfect in every social situation. You will continue to be the nerd that you are, but you will enjoy the next four years so much more if you just decide to own it. Be you, regardless of the weird looks that you get. Go crazy, dance at homecoming. Oh, but do be careful when you try to moonwalk this year because if you do not take this advice now, you will end up sitting in the lap of a girl in a wheelchair about 20 minutes into your first homecoming. That did happen, yes. You have been warned. <laughs> Number two, be appreciative. You did not survive the last 14 years of your life as your own doing. A lot of people spent a lot of time investing in you to make sure that you reach your full potential. They deserve one heck of a thank you. Also, as much as you hate to admit it, your mother's advice was, is, and always will be right. <laughs> oh, mom. Tell her thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Never waste an opportunity to tell someone that you love them. You do not know what the future holds. Number three, don't spend all your money in one place. Yes, Jimmy John's is delicious, but it also adds up. Number four, it's not about you. I understand, it can be difficult to have a broad perspective when all you're trying to do is pass Mr. Chappell's biology class. But do know this, you are more than your resume. You are more than your grades, your life, it's not actually about you. You need to get outside of your comfort zone and work to become a passionate leader who serves others. Don't drag your feet. Next year, you'll sit next to a girl at lunch the whole time and you'll never say a single word to her. Do not be dumb. She will end up being one of your absolute best friends. Don't waste an entire year of friendship just because you're afraid to introduce yourself. Don't wait to be loved. Don't wait to be accepted. Love and accept other people. It's not about you. Number five, don't live in envy. There will always be someone smarter, prettier, funnier, cooler, and more, <laughs> and more awesome than you, but that does not make them better than you. Just as much as your strengths don't make you better than anyone else. Everyone has a story, and you must become extremely proud of your accomplishments, but be a good winner and a good loser. Envy is a waste of time. Number six, try new things. Midland High School has a ton of things waiting for you. You're not athletic, but try a sport. 
Put yourself out there and run as an executive officer. Make art, challenge yourself academically. Become a Rhapsody MC. Write for the focus, sing for your worship band, join MHS drama in the second semester of your senior year. Oh, and you will regret never joining chess club. Just saying. <laughs> the more new things that you try, the better you will understand what you want to do with the rest of your life. What is it that you want to do with the rest of your life, you may ask? Well, that one you have to learn for yourself. Sincerely, 18-year-old Lauren. As I wrote this letter, it occurred to me, there's nothing that I can do about the past, and even if I could send this letter, I'm not sure that I would. I had to learn each and every one of those lessons in order to become the person that I am today. What I do know is this. Class of 2017, we have the power to control the future. With that, I give you the seven things that I tell my freshman self, freshman in college, that is. Number one, own it. Number two, be appreciative. Number three, don't spend all your money in one place. Oh wait, you don't have any, you're a college student. <laughs> Number four, it's not about you. Number five, don't live in envy. Number six, try new things. And number seven, as we move towards our looming futures, do not forget to take the lessons that you have learned and remember your roots. You will grow and you will continue to learn these life lessons. Just don't forget the chemic pride of integrity, passion, and perseverance. Life will not be perfect. It will be hard and it will be messy. But what emerges from that mess is a, a better version of yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Leanne Real, and it is with great excitement that I introduce to you tonight's keynote speaker. The speaker this evening began his teaching career 29 years ago and has spent all 29 years at Midland High. He has taught the majority of the English classes offered as well as some history classes. Over the years, he has taken on other roles as Midland High, such as serving as the yearbook advisor, being the head of Students Against Junk Driving, being a class advisor, an Ivy Diploma Candidate Mentor, and more. As one of the most memorable teachers at Midland High, he has inspired students for the past 29 years with his knowledgeable insight on literature, by reminding everyone to stay safe, and through his powerful stories that taught us about life, love, selflessness, purpose, and courage. The last time he spoke at commencement was in 1997, before most of us were born. He will now speak again 20 years later as we celebrate both the graduation of the class of 2017 and his retirement from a successful career of teaching. Tonight, I am honored to introduce to you our keynote speaker and everyone's buddy, Mr. Donald Demko. Thank you so much for inviting me here to be with you guys tonight. It's an honor. Um, when Leanne was a ninth grader, I, they were going to move her out of my classroom because of a scheduling conflict, so I had to run down to the counseling center and beg the counselor to keep her in my class. And it's still one of the best things I've ever done. Um, I'm going to tell you tonight, I just thought I'd share a couple of uh, stories with you, these moments in history. And I'm hoping that, you know, over the telling of the stories, that you find meaning in them, because I hope that's what you get from them. Uh, the first moment occurs in the year 1832. You're in Illinois, and a warrior chief by the name of Black Hawk has begun an uprising, trying to win back the land that was stolen from him. And he has begun an entire series of raids against the white settlers there. So the militia is brought in, and the militia is spending weeks trying to hunt down all of the Sauk Native Americans who are leading this uprising. And one day, as a company of soldiers are getting ready for dinner, as the sun is about to set, they look across the clearing of field grass, and coming out of the woods is a single warrior chief. He's an elderly chief. As he looks across and he sees he's outnumbered by at least 50 to 1, he tilts back his head and he starts marching bravely toward them. And the soldiers grab their rifles and they start to circle around the entire field. And amazingly, 
Much to their surprise, this old Indian chief starts to talk to them in, in perfect English as he says, I am not your enemy. I am not a member of Black Hawk's tribe. I am a Shawnee. I have a pass, and he holds up a piece of paper. I have a pass that allows me to have safe passage. It is signed by the general of your army. Please read it. And the soldiers start to circle around him like a wolf pack. And as they are advancing closer, he turns around. And he, the, uh, the, uh, the old warrior chief says, please, just one of you, read this. And all of a sudden, the soldiers start running right toward him. They tackle him across the ground. And a couple of them start to take their fist and start to pound in his face, in his chest. And that letter, that note, that pass flutters to the grass. And he's screaming, read the pass. And they continue to punch him. And as one of the soldiers raises up his fist one more time, all of a sudden a voice rings out. What's going on here, boys? And the soldiers freeze and they turn around and he's standing there, silhouetted against the sunset. He's tall, he's thin, he's the 23-year-old captain of their company. And the man on top of, this, of the uh, old warrior says, we're taking care of a problem, sir. And the captain says, really? And he starts to walk forward. He looks almost frail in his uniform. But as he comes up on top of them, he grabs two of the men and throws them off like they weigh nothing. His arms, his shoulders, his chest are like steel. As he comes walking toward them, the rest of the men scatter. And he picks up that piece of paper off the ground and raises it up. And one of the soldiers pipes up, it doesn't matter what it says on that paper, sir. And the captain looks down at it and he says, according to the general who signed it, it means something. And he walks directly above the old chief laying on the grass. And he does something that shocks the rest of the men in his company. He reaches down with an open hand. And an old Indian chief looks up at him. In the last five minutes, he has had no reason to trust any man in a military uniform. But there's something about this man's eyes that's totally different. And he reaches up. And they clasp hands. And the captain brings him to his feet and instantly pulls him behind him, shielding him from the rest of the men. And he looks down at the note. And one of the men looks up at him and he says, we kill them before they kill us, sir. That's the way it is. And the captain looks down at the note again. And he looks up at his men and he says, well, men, if you want to kill this man, I suppose you can. But if you kill him, you're going to have to kill me first. And he smiles. And the entire company breaks out into laughter. The captain is real famous for his sense of humor. And he holds that smile for seven seconds until he collapses. And he starts to stare into the eyes of every single one of his men. And one of those soldiers, decades later, would write, it was like he was trying to will his own goodness into us. It was like he was trying to show us what we should be. And one by one, the men start to feel not only remorse, but shame for what they've done. And they start to wander away one by one until only the tall, thin captain and that Shawnee chief are the only ones left on that field. And the captain turns to him. And he puts the note back into his hand and he says, the boys get a little riled up around supper time. Don't worry, no one will hurt you. And the old warrior chief grabs his arm and says, why? Why did you risk your life to save a total stranger? And the man looks at him quizzically and the captain says, it was the right thing to do. Good luck. And he pats him on the shoulder. As he starts to walk away, the Shawnee chief yells one more time, Your name! What's your name? And the tall, thin captain turns around. And he smiles. And he says, Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. And he turns around. 
and he walks into the sunset, into a destiny even he could not imagine. Moment number two. It's a warm, beautiful, sunny day in September in New York in the year 2001. And as a fire truck comes over the Brooklyn Bridge, they are staring up in literal disbelief. Both towers of the World Trade Center are belching out smoke and flames to a degree that none of the firefighters on this truck have ever witnessed before in their careers. And when they finally stop about 17 city blocks away from the World Trade Center, they climb down from the truck and they stand there for a few moments looking up in a combination of awe and horror. And the captain and one of his oldest and trusted friends are standing next to each other. And they're looking up. And one man turns to the captain and he says, do you think we could possibly put that fire out? And the captain of the fire brigade looks up and he says, nope, no way. And then his friend turns to him again and he says, Cap, do you think we're going to get out of this one alive? And the captain's staring up at those blazing towers and he says, I don't know. And then he does something totally out of character. He looks down and he takes off one of his gloves and he reaches out to his best friend with an open hand. And his friend looks at it for a second and then all of a sudden he realizes what that gesture means. And he reaches out and the two men shake hands. They were trying to tell each other, thank you for being a friend. And that it's been an honor to be standing by your side all these years, just in case they don't have a chance to say it later. How often do we get a chance to tell people in our lives how much they mean to us and we let it go? And it begins a cascade effect across the entire fire brigade as all the men in the company behind him start to reach out, grab each other by the shoulders, wrap their arms around each other's shoulders. And there's a rookie firefighter in the back. He's been, only been on the job for a few months and his face is turning white. And he looks up and he says, how do we fight this? What do we do? And one of the old grizzled veterans is standing right next to him and he reaches up and puts his hand right on top of his helmet. And he says, whatever we're gonna do, we're gonna do it together. You are not alone. And that young rookie firefighter manages a smile. And he says, okay. And the grizzled veteran looks up toward the front and he said, Cap, we're ready. He said, grab your gear, men. And they grab their gear, the hoses, the tanks, and they start walking rapidly toward the World Trade Center. But after only three or four blocks, they break into a run. And by the time they get to the south tower of the World Trade Center, they're running toward the doors as hundreds and hundreds of people are fleeing out of it. And by the time they get to that first staircase, they are charging up the steps. The thread that ties both of those two stories together is the same thread that connects all of us in life. We're always waiting, always looking for people to reach out, out to us, whether it's in the good times or the bad times. We're looking for that connection because we need help or we need somebody to inspire us, or we need somebody to incite the courage that lies dormant in all of us. And this is the really great part. I've been fortunate enough to have almost half of you guys in my classes over the last four years. I have seen you guys reach out to each other, to adults, to teachers, over and over thousands of times. You guys have it in you. 
I have always been so proud of you. You've reached out to help people with their academics. You've reached out to help people cheer up on some of their worst days. You've reached out to make people feel included and part of the gang. And every time you've done that, you've been a reflection, a reflection of Abraham Lincoln and even the firefighters of 9-11. Because when you reached out to people, you were showing them what is best in people. And 70 or 80 years from now, when you're looking back at your entire life and you're trying to think, what was it all for? What did it all mean? Every memory that you've ever had of someone reaching out to you will still be there because that's a reflection of what is best in you. That is a reflection of what you were here for in the first place. Guys, don't ever stop reaching out. Don't ever stop reaching out to as many people as you can for the rest of your lives because every time you reach out to somebody, it is never a wasted gesture. Bless you guys, and have a great life, okay? Thank you, Mr. Demko. Hello, my name is Ben Ladwig, and before I introduce Mr. Jaster, I'd like to explain the class gifts that we're giving to the principal and the high school building. As each one of us crosses the stage tonight, we'll hand Mr. Jaster a puzzle piece. These pieces together form a picture of Midland High's building that the class of 2017 is gifting to him. The gift to the building is a pergola, which will be placed by the front corner of the building near the ivy. Now, it is my privilege tonight to introduce our principal, Mr. Jeff Jaster. Mr. Jaster is both a former teacher and assistant principal here at Midland High. For many of us, this isn't our first time having Mr. Jaster as our principal, as he was also principal of Northeast Middle School. But probably most importantly, Mr. Jaster is a fellow chemic, as he was a member of the 1988 Midland High School graduating class. Mr. Jaster fully exemplifies chemic pride. He goes above and beyond to be there for his students. One such memory of this that sticks out to me personally occurred during homecoming hallway decorating earlier this year. We had spent the day working on a masterpiece of a hallway, but also creating quite the mess of glue, glitter, and paint. But in the midst of our mess, I look up and see Mr. Jaster standing there with a mop, ready to help out in any way he could. It was a Sunday, he didn't have to be there, so it really meant a lot to us. And it was at this point, I couldn't help but say to myself, sometimes, I don't know if Mr. Jaster is my principal or my best friend. Mr. Jaster is an outstanding principal who is always supportive of events here at Midland High and puts the students before anything else. He's truly a role model for all of us. So, without further ado, please help me give a warm welcome to our principal, Mr. Jeff Jaster. Thank you, Ben. I'll apologize in advance. I've been uh, trying to keep my voice the last two days. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's allergies or cold or what, but we're going to try to get through this. Um, seniors, you guys look great tonight. I can, it just emphasizes why blue is my favorite color to look out and see you guys in your gowns. It's amazing. Uh, I'd like to welcome our guests one more time, Mr. Brutin, Mr. Cooper, members of the Board of Education, parents, family members, and of course the class of 2017. 
And uh, as I said, since I'm the last speaker before you get your diplomas, I'll try to make this quick. On September 3rd, 2013, you guys entered Midland High School, and you probably thought this night would never come. You made it. Tonight's your night. I hope afterwards you celebrate with family and friends. And now that this is really happening, I want to point out that this ceremony likely means something different to each one of you. Some of you have future plans already in place, and I'm sure there are a few who haven't planned beyond tonight. A shared part of this experience, though, is that all of you probably have mixed emotions about leaving what's familiar here at Midland High School and entering the unknown. <clears throat> One thing I can tell you for certain is this. You should enjoy the night. Take a look around, look up in the stands. All these people are here tonight to celebrate with you. So really soak it in and enjoy it. It's been a tradition at the high school um, for the principal's commencement address to include information about the class of 2017. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna read a fairly lengthy list of all the accomplishments of this year's class. Start with some of the academic achievements first. <clears throat> Out of this group, 223 students, that's almost 75%, made the honor roll. I don't know of any other school where, where that happens, and it's a regular occurrence. Uh, these students have AP, IB, and SAT scores that are consistently higher than state average for sure and national average. This class has been awarded $3.8 million in scholarship money to continue their post-secondary education. And out of that, 20 students in this, in this class have full-ride scholarships based on their academics. 67% <coughs> plan to attend a four-year university. 27% plan to enroll in a community college. About 4% are gonna enter a trade school or vocational program. And then the remaining 2% plan to enter the world of work. Last but not least, we have six students who have chosen to join the military and they'll soon be serving our country after basic training. <laughs> Continuing on, we had 35 members of the FOCUS staff earn individual awards at this year's MIPA conference. In addition, two of those journalists um, earned student journalism all-state team honors. And then as a school paper, the focus was awarded a gold medal for journalistic excellence. So that's a couple years in a row now. BPA, DECA, forensics have had successful years and many regional and state um, awards were received. Band, orchestra, and choir uh, continue to earn superior ratings at regional and local MSBOA festival competitions. Our welding and trades programs continue to excel, and our students earn numerous awards, again, at uh, district and regional competitions, and even some at the state level. Our equestrian team, first place in districts and regionals, and for the second year in a row, they competed at states, and they finished the season fourth in the state in their division. <laughs> we, we have had a great success with our robotics team. Um, they've earned several accolades this year and top five finishes in local and regional competitions and they also finished the season ranked 17th out of 451 teams in the state so that's a great accomplishment too <clears throat> there are also too many awards to mention in several other areas including math science science olympiad computer programming theater the arts music debate we are always competitive here at MHS, and students excel in many areas. In the area of service, the class of 2017 has shown great service and philanthropy, and they've helped their school and community. They've been involved in food drives, magazine drives, Kids Against Hunger, Adoptive Family, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Kiva, the American Cancer Society, Blood Drives, <coughs> excuse me, Salvation Army, and then the Toys for Tot program here in, in our local area. In sports, in the area of athletics, we have had several league championships. Uh, those were in the areas of girls volleyball, girls softball, boys baseball, and we we're runners up in boys golf. 
uh, earn district championships in girls volleyball and uh, soon to be girls soccer, softball, and boys baseball tomorrow. We're rooting for them. Um, <laughs> we also have had um, a regional championship team with our girls volleyball uh, group this past fall. Last but not least, 58 seniors earned SVL honors, two for league MVPs, 23 for first team recognition, 23 for second team, and then 12 for honorable mention. And then we've had numerous individual uh, state and regional qualifiers. Perhaps the most impressive of all these awards, out of our 226 senior athletes, we had 97, again almost half, uh, earn SVL academic recognition based on their GPA. So it goes back to what I mentioned at the start. The number of kids who excel here academically is, is truly outstanding. So if we could give this group one more round of applause. <laughs> As Ben mentioned, this night is rewarding for me because I've known most of these kids since sixth grade. Um, many of you went through Northeast. Now I know there is a group uh, who, who spent their last year in eighth grade at Central Middle School before it closed. Um, but I feel like I've known all of you now for you know, six or seven years. It's, just, it's a close-knit group here at Midland High School. And I do take pride in getting to know the kids. On Friday, last week, the last day for seniors, I shared part of a note that I had written to them. And it's supposed to be published, published in their yearbook that they're going to pick up uh, later this summer before they go to college. But tonight, I'd like to read uh, the whole note. It's not that long, so uh, if you'll bear with me. Dear seniors, I've thoroughly enjoyed the time we've had together at Midland High School the past two years. Proud of each one of you for your effort, and I wish you all the best in whatever lies ahead. Please take some time to reflect on your high school experience before you're too far removed from it. I hope all of you are able to look back on your time here with no regrets. Unfortunately, regrets usually mean you didn't try something that you wish you would have, or you didn't give your best effort somewhere along the way. Reflecting on your high school experience, good or bad, will help you to reprioritize and set goals for the next phase of your life. I challenge each of you to look for new opportunities to face challenges head on and to embrace the concept of lifelong learning. Collectively, doing these things will help to cultivate a growth mindset. Simply put, we're never too old to learn something new. The views and opinions that you have now, even if you hold them firm, are likely to change as you get older. This includes your political views, your belief system, your interpretation of your past, everything. Embrace change. It's what makes life interesting. And I think that last line is the important one. Embrace change. It's what makes life interesting. All of you are about to embark on some major life changes. And so I guess I would just encourage you to cherish those opportunities, those experiences, and take full advantage of them. What you can count on in your life is that hard work matters. Having courage, even when you might be scared to take a risk, can often mean the difference between success and failure. And so taking advantage of opportunities to better yourself and always do your best. Not giving your best effort is really just wasting your time. Reflecting on this school year, I remember the great things I've witnessed, leadership, service, friendship, successes and failures, acceptance, resiliency, all of these things, the entire experience in your high school career has made each of you a chemic. It's my hope that you're leaving here with good memories, some lifelong friendships, a sense of pride that you are part of something special here at Midland High School, and ultimately, I hope that all of you will be better off for having been here. So, the class of 2017, you are the 142nd graduating class from Midland High School. I want you to remember this. Chemics support each other. Chemics make a difference. They look out for each other. They always try to leave things better than they found them. And there's limitless potential in this room. Each of you has played a role in carrying on the traditions of our school. And that's something special. Once a chemic, always a chemic. So to all of our graduates here tonight, I wish you the best in whatever lies ahead. Be proud of what you've achieved. All of you 
are going to have great celebrations. And as I said earlier, everyone here is um, hoping to celebrate with you later tonight. Uh, so enjoy those moments. Congratulations. You will be missed. Thank you, Mr. Jaster. Hello, my name is Luke Waskovich, and tonight with great pride, I would like to introduce Mrs. Pamela Singer as the Board of Education member who will formally accept this year's Class of 2017. Mrs. Singer was named Treasurer of the Board in 2013, but, ev but even before this, she displayed boundless dedication to both the Midland Public School System and the community as well. With over 20 years of service, compassion, and commitment to Midland's youth and young adult population, we couldn't be more honored to have her here tonight. So please join me in welcoming Mrs. Pamela Singer. Thank you, Mr. Wastigovich. And thank you, Mr. Jaster, for your leadership. It's an honor to be here this evening and enjoying and celebrating the class of 2017. Class of 2017, your success is earned. First of all, from your hard work and perseverance in fulfilling all the graduation requirements. On behalf of the Midland Public School Board of Education, it is my pleasure and honor to accept the 142nd Midland High graduating class, the class of 2017. As the names of the graduates are read, please be respectful when they walk across the stage and hold your applause until the end. Thank you. All right. Julia Alexis Adams. Laura Elizabeth Alexander. Sonia Doan Anderson. Ian Jeffrey Andridge. Yeah. Alex Christos Anganis. Abigail Morgan Avery. Courtney Marie Avery. Caroline Grace Bacon. Casey Bramblett Bailey. Corey Ann Bailey. Timothy Michael Barnes. Reese Gregory Bartos. Tanner Donald Bartos. Gage Sterling Battle. Mary Harris Beal. Olivia Marie Beasley. James Todd Beebe. Brady John Bellinger. Hunter John Bellinger. Nicholas Conrad Burchert. Logan William Barahula. Grace Allison Berlin. Nicholas Jacob Bilovitz. McKenna Marie Bono. 
Riley Kenneth Bradley. Joshua Philip Braley. Ashlyn Marie Brining. Aiden Paul Brown. Jessica Renee Brown. Kateria Monique Bryant. Cody Michael Burt. Jenna Rose Byron. Zachary Thomas Capua. Payne Corbin Cassidy. Paige Marie Chaffin. Jacob Robert Chapman. Olivia Grace Kritz. Carson Reed Clark. Evan DeBleek Cobb. Austin Scott Cochran. Alyssa Marie Coffey. Ella Margaret Colbert. Jenna Marie Collins. Ryan Christopher Cook. Kevin Michael Combs. Sydney Abigail Layla Coppins. Rachel Simone Causey. Kirsten Alexa Cotton. Quinlan Selby Cox. Cody Benjamin Crane. Connor Matthew Crane. Michaela Michelle Crosby. Lauren Elizabeth Curtis. Jesse Dylan Delzell. Casey Ann DeBoom. Sadie Marie DeWilt. Christopher Andrew Dyden. Margaret Louise Dietz. Cody Jean Dykeman, Salome Caroline Jane Doe, Ashton Paige Doyle, Brendan Allen Doyle, Gregory Edward Draves, Brittany K. Duford, Emilia Alexis Dupuy, Roske Jonah Dykeisen, Jillian Jennifer Elmer. Jared William Anguis. Spencer James Erton Henderson. Lydia Ann Smith Fajeda. 
Kara Marie Feruzzi. Kennedy Ray Fisher. Amanda Lynn Fisher. Alexis Paige Foster. Benjamin Joseph Frangioni. Ashley Lynn Frank. Chance Russell Freed. Evan Joseph Frick. Madison K. Friedel. Erica Elizabeth Gafke. Chloe Elizabeth Gall. Sarah Marie Garcia. Mitch Abraham Garland. Grace Ann Gay. Parker Lee Gano. Todd Michael Genzel Jr. Ethan Charles Getgood. Hannah Victoria Goff. Jordan Blake Gonder. Matthew Robert Gordon. Kayla Janae Graham. Zane Randall Gray. <laughs> Megan Jordan Greer. Sonny Shamar Grigsby. <laughs> Julia Ann Gross. <laughs> Tara June Gross. Alexandra Rose Grumbly. Hunter Elizabeth Grunwell. James Lucian Gustin. Aaron Michael Guzman. Cameron Ronald Douglas Hyder. Lila Maria Haynes. Natalie Yuka Halfen. Jonas Reed Halverson Mori. Alexis Jane Hammond. Cameron Michael Haskell. Emma Mackenzie Haycock. Riley Ann Hazen. Benjamin Michael Hendrickson. Tiffany Morgan Hendy. Madison Alexandria Hurt. Danielle Nicole Herzberg. Emily Grace Hills. Jacob Robert Hine. Annalisa Nicole Honer. Ariana Marie Honer. Gabrielle Alyssa Holman. 
Dylan Michael Holtman. Anne Marie Elaine Alzu Hotop. Eric Robert Hotop. Spencer John Hool. Skylar Nicole Howard. Tyler Christopher Ignis. Aaron Joseph Ives. Andrew Tyler Jacobson. Jonathan Gregory Jardis. Seth Ryan Jardno. Noah Casimiri Jenkins. Ellie Marie Jensen. Kyle Gregory Johnson. Sydney Hanbuel Johnson. Avery Kathleen Jones. Abigail Tyne Joswiak. Cameron Keith Judd. Yeah. Kelly Nicole Cadlick. Larissa Louise Theriot Kalinowski. Bailey Michael Keel. Casey Michael Keenan. Tabitha Morgan Kennedy. Yeah! Ryan Daniel Kent. Yeah! Hope Elise Kessler. Yeah. Courtney Nicole Kaiser. Yeah! Maya Jo Kipfmiller. Connor Kenneth Kloppenstein. Monica Clausen. Jeffrey Edward Knott III. Carson Scott Prenzline. Jessica Lynn Krawczak. Emily Ann Crush. Jacob Henry Kruger. Benjamin Gerald Ladwig. Gregory David Landis. Laura Megan Lang. Tessa Faye Lang. Noah Matthew Lasky. Alexis Autumn Ligon. Morgan Lynn Letzkis. Isabel Devorah Levinson. Matthew Joseph Lyle. Elizabeth Ann Long. Fletcher Hale Luce. Michelle Daniela Lowry. Samuel James Luzar. Stephanie Joanna Lynch. Hunter James Maggart. <laughs> Riley Elise Maximu. <laughs> Sarah Renee Machino. <laughs> Jessica Margaret Mathewson. 
Liliana Loren Maxwell. Garrett Joseph May. Zachary, Zachary Edward May. Taylor Jordan McCloskey. Tamara Nikita McCoy. Selena Jo McCray. Thomas J. McGraw. Taylor Irene McGurk. Madeline Lorette McLaren. Nicholas James McMahon. Emily Millicent McReynolds. Brian Luke Mealy. Connor Alexander Myers. Michaela Lee Mejanowski. Thomas Johan Miller. Emily Karen Milliman. Caitlin Hala Elizabeth Moe. Zachary Thomas Monica. James Ryan James Moore. Alicia Marie Morales. Raul Marrera. Madeline Elizabeth Morgan. Dana Elizabeth Morse. Bailey Scott Murphy. Justin Allen Murphy. Paige Marie Murphy. Samantha Leigh Myers. John Lee Neal. Jacob John Paul Nelson. Alexis Renee Nichols. Hannah Bojena Novacek. Reese Michael Nye. Madeline Ethelene O'Callaghan. Matthew Pierce Olenzik. Eliana Sarah Olkin. Lawton James Orr. Luke Edward Parks. Spencer Michael Parsh. Elizabeth Ann Parsons. Parth Bharat Patel. Jordan Michael Paddy. Narya Nassim Paytas. Jose Carlos Bazvaca. Owen Michael Peck. Madison Marie Perry. Benjamin Michael Purs. Ashley Lynn Phillips. Austin James Phillips. Kayla Elizabeth Phillips. Danielle Marie Pickens. Marie Veronica Plaver. Owen Zachary Postma. 
Noam Christopher Pretzer. <laughs> Hannah Jo Price. <laughs> Mackenzie Jane Rajeski. <laughs> Cassandra Joy Ramidi. <laughs> Marissa Raylan Ramos. Serenity Jane Reddo Strait. Sarah Renee, Renee Remsing. Leanne Audrey Real. Alexandra Virginia Rago. Kyle Xavier Ritchie. Taylor May Roberts. Benjamin Michael Robertson. Satchel Caden Robertson. Bryn Ellen Rohde. Caitlin Annette Rowland. Juliana Janice Deanna Roller. Nicholas James Ross. Haley Elizabeth Russell. Mackenzie Patricia Rutluski. Molly May Sanford. Dalton Bradley Saunders. Hunter Austin Schneider. Rachel Victoria Schneider. Madeline Elizabeth Schroeder. Erin Marie Sheridan. Brendan Chase Short. Lauren Ashley Sigmund. Caleb David Michael Simmons. Shelby Lynn Skim. Alexandra Kelly Smith. Allison Elizabeth Smith. Haley Adriana Smith. Heather Marie Smith. Madison May Smith. Andrea Suzanne Sova. Kara Michelle Spencer. Zachary Michael Spies. Tyler John Squires. Michelle Renee St. Louis. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Striebel. Hypatia Echo Swanson. Joshua Ryan Sweeby. Stephen Levi Swearden. Marin Elizabeth Tarnowski. Brandon Russell Taylor. Zachary Robert Thomas. Dakota Marie Taranjo. Casey Lee Trebilcock. Keaton Ty Tyler Trombley. Luke Edward Trombley. Reese Vandergren. Destiny K. Marie Van Pelt. 
Morgan Ryan Jaboom. Alexandra Lee Van Sumeren. Samuel George Vogel. Katie Elizabeth Volmering. Vincent Larray Walker. Logan Joseph Waco. Kyle Patrick Walsh. Nevada Lee Walters. Jacob Donald Waltz. Cameron Jean Waskovich. Luke Christopher Waskovich. Cal Montgomery Welser. Jasmine Angelita West. Adam Jerome White. Jaden Emlyn Williams. Sarah Ann Wing. Lillian Ann Elizabeth Wise. Autumn Marie Wisner. Brendan Alexander Witt. Emma Ann Wolf. Caitlin Marie Wolf. Kenton Ray Wontorsik. Gypsy Twilight Worrell. Anna Caroline Wright. Caitlin Marie Wright. Tara Lynn Young. Gary Thomas Urgides. Madison Aaron Zablocki. Kaylee Marie Zariski. Megan Nicole Zastro. Madeline Rose Ziegler. All right, please give a round of applause for the class of 2017. Hello, my name is Allie Smith and I am honored to be a part of our ceremony tonight. Our class has made some amazing memories together that I am very lucky to have been a part of. On behalf of our class, I would like to thank all of the parents and MHS staff that have gotten us where we are today. All of you have dedicated so much to our success and none of these seats would be filled if it weren't for your love and support, so thank you. Tonight, we sit among people that will do wonderful things. In some way, every member of the class of 2017 will change the world. To ensure the success of your future, remind yourself of the lessons taught to you by each Midland High principal in the past. Remember, don't drink and drive, don't drink. You're fine just the way you are. Make sure you stay safe, make good decisions, and inspire the world around you. Remember, look out for each other, don't judge. It is important as we continue on each one of our journeys that we realize that other people may be going through their own struggles. Stay kind and stay loyal. Remember, keep 20 cents in your pocket. Make sure you take the lessons you have learned as a chemic and use them throughout your life. Use spare change to help another person in need. Keep giving even when you feel like the world isn't giving back to you. Be compassionate and others will return the favor. Remember, we want to talk with you on Monday, not about you. Once again, stay safe. We want to look forward to the days when we gather together for reunions, reminiscing on our old high school memories. Don't risk the good memories ahead with one bad decision now. Remember, see the light. It's all right to be a little bit crazy, but don't do anything stupid. I hope all of you continue your lives with happiness, love, and a lot of laughs. Be unique and continue to see what is in front of you. 
Look forward to the future and secure the good memories to come by making good decisions now. And remember, it's always the right time to do the right thing. Our community, parents, teachers, and friends have all shaped who we are. Continue to be the upstanding chemic that you were molded to be, and I know you will go very far in life. Now it is time for the moment we have all waited and worked so hard for. The turning of the tassel traditionally represents the shift that is occurring in our lives as we transition from being high schoolers to official high school graduates. Class of 2017, please stand up. And please join me in turning your tassel from the right side to the left side. Congratulations, you are officially Chemic alumni.
don't see it. Yeah. We're gonna do our best. I know. Our kids are prepared. Hopefully they don't stay out too late. Let's go home by 11 and go to bed. Those boys I have no worry about. Yeah.